guys, so today's video is a very quick one about someone very polarizing and it's polarizing for me, polarizing for everyone, but I, I'm gonna talk about it. Recently, as you guys know, Gabby Han has been going through a bit of a situation. I think he, I think Gabby Han was having a manic episode, but that's not for me to decide, that's for a professional to decide. And a lot of that was documented on TikTok through hundreds of TikTok videos that she then deleted and posted. TikTok essentially being like, you know, this was all art. You guys are just misunderstanding my art. I'm glad TMZ is talking about me and it looked really weird. You guys have not shut the f up about me. I'm doing something productive and creative. <laughs> are you? <laughs> or are you just talking about my art? <laughs> in the midst of this manic episode, allegedly, a stranger was let into her house because he decided to find her address on the internet, go to her house and pretend that he's like lost to manipulate her into letting him into the house. And he would then film her medication, film her house. And then she finally found out from the comments that he was someone that knew who she was and was there for a reason. So she kicked him out. Oh, hi. 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 Think you can use your bathroom? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Come on. thank you. Hey, there's mine. Oh, What's your you. name? My name's Nick. Nick? Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Right there, is right it? Right here? Right there. Right here? Yeah. Oh, thank you. By the way, Nick? Yes. I know you know who I am. Come on. Why did you lie to me this whole time? Why what did you this? lie to me? That's for my acne, you dumb cunt. Get the fuck out of my house, now. Now. Now! After all of this happened, she ended up getting like a neck tattoo that people were having a go at her for. I don't really understand why. Like, why do we care about what tattoos people are getting? But essentially it was like four insects. Oh, spiders can say, I'm not very good at like, what's an insect, what isn't. But she explained um, why she got that tattoo, what the meanings are, so I'm gonna play that for you guys now. The carpenter bee represents working in solitude. The stag beetle represents the triumph of good over evil and the infamous metamorphosis into a musician. The black widow, I've always loved black widows since I was a kid and I was a black widow in Charlotte's Web. <laughs> and then I was a black widow for Halloween. But the one, that, dude, this is actually fucking crazy. I was cleaning out my guest room because I had somebody coming to watch my cats when I was going on a trip to Austin and she was bringing a baby to stay here. Keep in mind, there's never a fucking baby here. So as I'm doing it, this little spider crawls and I go to kill it. And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna kill that because like, you know, bugs are good and we're all God's creatures or whatever. And then this little thought in my head was like, what if it's fucking pregnant? So then I went after it and I stepped on it. So I stepped out into the hallway and there was this guy putting in these security screens in my house and I just said out loud, I just stepped on a spider and it stuck on my foot. And without hesitation, he came over with a little piece of paper and pulled it off. And I was like, thank you. And then he said, it's a good thing you killed this. This is a black widow. If this would have bitten you, you would have gotten a fever. These are really dangerous to babies. Like what? There's literally never a baby in my house and there's a black widow spider in the room I'm preparing a baby to stay in. All of it. What are the odds? So I look at this black widow as a sign to myself to trust my instinct. The butterfly, my song butterflies, but also the very beautiful and perfect metaphor of a little caterpillar cocooning by itself, everybody kind of looking the other way and forgetting about it. And then it blooms into a fucking butterfly. It's transformation, it's rebirth, it's change, it's turning into something beautiful. This is a little star. I love stars. There was gonna be a sun here, but I got a little too nervous with just, I wanted to see it all healed before I started adding anything. There was also a little planet that was supposed to go here, but it was feeling a little too tight. So I decided to simplify it, but I might add a little planet somewhere else. She has many other tattoos than just that one, but people are saying things like, you know, you're gonna ruin your career because of this tattoo, like you're never gonna get a real job. I don't think Gabby Hanna needs a real job. I think she's been quite frugal her whole life, which is something that she does say in TikTok. She's been quite frugal. She's got a house, you know, I think she's fine. I don't think she's looking for a real job. So recently she started posting that she's getting all of her tattoos removed. I started the process of getting all my tattoos removed. I'm so excited for the day they're completely gone. Over these five years or less. I was doing everything I could 
to be anyone but myself because I thought that it would help me heal and I ended up hurting myself instead. People are saying like, was her getting tattoos like a manic episode, like a part of like the impulsivity of a manic episode? Is this now a manic episode? Like she's impulsively getting rid of them. But if you are just starting to get worried again that she's once again going through some kind of a crisis and it's just like showing in a different way. She claims that she's reaching peace now and that now she's like fine, but back then she wasn't. Feeling better, just saw a TikTok that really uplifted me. <laughs> and uh, just choosing to be gracious for all my experiences, all of my opportunities, the fact that I'm alive right now, the fact that I have all of these messes to clean up and that I'm able to, and that I've been led to finally cleaning up my messes and actually beginning to heal. Guys, this is tough. This is tough. And I know that we are all on like completely separate but very similar journeys. It's hard. I'm gonna make today productive. I'm gonna take care of my health. I'm going to get a lot of stuff done until it feels like I can't anymore because the things that I need to do will make me feel better. All I can do is focus on the positive, the future, what I can do for myself and thus do for others and just let God take over. But then back then she said she was also fine, but she wasn't. So it's very difficult to like figure out when she actually is fine. She also posted TikToks crying and explaining her thought process. <laughs> like this never ending cycle of like, just be better, be happy, forgive yourself. <laughs> Move on, be better, make the most of this edge, this moment. Like, enjoy the breath, enjoy your body, take care of yourself. Like, I'm so blessed that I know that, but it's still just like, it hurts so much. She says that she wishes she had some friends and claims that she's dealt with things in her life wrong, and that's why she doesn't have friends. Here's the. Here's the thing that's super hard to say out loud, and I'm gonna say it out loud to a bunch of strangers. Man, I wish I had some friends. <sighs> Why I don't have friends? It's just hard to like not be mad at myself because I feel like it's like, man, I just like dealt with so much of my life so poorly because like I just didn't know how. And like I've gotten to a point like a while ago where I started forgiving just like everybody for like everything, right? But I'm still having so much trouble forgiving myself. And her family lived very far away from her. So it makes sense that like, if she doesn't have friends, it makes sense where there was no one there to check up on her. Because a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, I bet she has friends to check up on her. Clearly she doesn't. And it's kind of refreshing to see that she is admitting that she has handled things wrong, hence why she doesn't have friends. Like with all the Escape the Night drama, she lost those friends because she was a nuisance to work with. And then when she was called out, she ended up calling them out, which was, and then lied, you know? So she lost all those friends. She lost Hannah Mojo as a friend. She lost Jesse Smiles as a friend. She lost a bunch of friends through just doing things very wrong and then never holding herself accountable. And it's kind of refreshing to see her admit that in a TikTok. She also said that she wants to leave LA, which I've noticed the trend of people leaving LA and, you know, talking about how toxic it is, which I think it definitely is if you're there in like the wrong way, if that makes sense. I think a lot of people go to LA and they're able to handle it correctly and have the support system around them. But if you don't have a support system and if you're only surrounded by yes men, I think you need to leave LA because it just doesn't benefit anyone mentally. I've been so ready to get out of LA for a minute. And it's hard. It is so hard. But... <sighs> And I've seen a lot of people kind of improve their life by just leaving LA. And I think maybe that'd be a great thing for her, but she does say that, you know, like that move is difficult. It's difficult to just uproot your whole life and just... So that is another thing that's kind of keeping her trapped in a toxic bit of her life, which is where she lives. She also posted some TikTok stories with explanations of kind of what's going on. You can post like stories on TikTok now, which is so confusing. So TikTok stories is what she posted to explain this. And then I saw on my For You page, which is initially why I started looking into this. It came up on my For You page that she was on TikTok live and she was discussing the manic episode that she had and she was like very emotional about it. It's my driveway. <sighs> Something that everybody was right about.
was a fucking stupid. I think that I was like almost like holding on to mania so that I didn't have to like reach this point where like I feel like this now. Like if I could just like keep pushing through and like using the energy that I could get to a place where it was just like okay again. Um, I know a lot of people, I've been kind of looking around and seeing people's reactions to this. A lot of people are still very negatively looking at the situation. Like people are very not willing to understand and help Gabby because she has one cried wolf so many times, like so many situations where she did something for attention and then we felt bad for her, but then it turned out to be for attention. So like, it's very difficult. A lot of people are saying, you know, she cries wolf all the time. She can't expect us to now feel bad for her when she's expected us to feel bad for her every other time she's cried wolf. Then there's obviously just like her just being not a very nice person, allegedly. Obviously the Jesse Smile situation, the Escape the Night situation, everyone has had some kind of a negative experience with her. So it's just difficult to take what she says at face value when she has been caught lying before. So there are both sides. And then some people do feel bad for her saying, you know, clearly she's been going through it mentally. And maybe once she leaves LA, finds some friends, surrounds herself with positive people, maybe then she'll reach a point where she isn't doing all of this for attention anymore. She's clearly a lonely person just wanting attention from anyone. And the way that she gets it is through doing things on the internet. So maybe when she starts getting that attention in real life, that will help her not do it online. But that is two sides of the story. Let me know what you guys think about this whole, the whole thing. Do you believe her? Do you think she's crying wolf? Like, let me know what you guys think. Subscribe to the bell, like, comment for engagement, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.